So let's take a look at the option menu. The option menu is basically a menu that is going to show up when a user hits the hard menu key on their device. So if you look at this screenshot I have of one that I had created for our protein tracker, what we're going to build here, I've got a settings and a help. And you can see that this is just the common, what you would expect the basic operations, like in a Windows application where you might have your file edit, your basic stuff that applies to an action or an activity is going to go in this in this spot here in this menu. If you have more than six items in an option menu, it's going to show a more item, which I don't have pictured here, but if you had more than six, it wouldn't, it would only show the five and then it would show a button that, that says more and you could click that. It's also going to, typically you're going to want to have your settings be here. This is where a user, when they hit menu on your screen, they're going to expect to be able to click settings and go to the settings. That's just the standard behavior that's that's pretty much expected. And one thing to keep in mind with option menus is that in general they're specific to the activity. So if your application has multiple activities, you may want to make the, the context essentially of the option menu is that full activity, that full screen. So those things that show up in that menu should apply to that activity or screen. So that's all there is for the option menu and we'll go in, we'll go over how to create one a little bit later, but you're going to want to use one in the case that you have some context that's very specific to an activity or general to your application settings, help, things like that. Next, the context menu. This, as you can see here, is a menu that is going to, it'll show up in the middle of the screen. And you can't really tell from the picture here, but this particular context menu I had hooked up to the enter key, which is something that you probably won't do in your application very often. But the menu applies to whatever the context is of the view that, that the user has long pressed on. So it's very similar to right-clicking on an item on a, on a PC or a Mac and getting that context menu where it has, has a menu items that are specific to the thing that you've clicked on. Same thing here in Android, except it's a long press on a button. And you know, a good example of this would be if you had a list and you had some items in this list and, so, and you made a context menu so that when the user long holds one of the items on the list, it gives them the option to delete or copy or cut or rename that item. So context menu is kind of very simple what, exactly what it sounds like. It's the context of the item that, that is being long pressed. Finally, let's look at the submenu. So a submenu here is just, it's a real simple concept. All it is, is another menu that is under either an option menu or a context menu. And we can only go to a nesting level of one. Uh, so you'll have to keep this in mind when you're doing your design. It allows for that hierarchy, but again, only to the one level of nesting. So this is really useful in circumstances where you have you, where you don't want to have a more button, for example, on the option menu, or you just want to create some kind of organization to your to your menu structure. Now, you do have to think about, you know, we're we're working with mostly mobile applications here, you know, for Android. So you do have to think, do I want to add complexity here? If you're if you're finding that you're using sub menu a lot, you might want to reconsider your design and realize that a user of a mobile application is trying to get in and get out. They're not going to want to navigate through a hierarchy of menus. And I think that's part of the reason why it only allows one level deep of nesting. But this can be useful in certain circumstances, and it's definitely an option that's available to you. So let's take a look at one more thing before we go into the examples for how to create these menus. Let's look at checkable items. So in Android, menu items can be made checkable. And this doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have a checkbox. In fact, there's some, only certain circumstances where they will actually have a checkbox. What this does do is allow you to create essentially a single select or a multi-select for a group of menu items or a selection for a single menu item. What I mean by that is that if you have your menu items in a group, which I'll show you how to create later, you can 
basically choose whether or not one of them is selected, which would give you a radio button selection on that menu item, or a multi-select, which would let you have more than one selected. If you have a single menu item, you can choose whether that single menu item by itself is checkable or not. And one thing to keep in mind here is that this is only going to work automatically on context menu items. So when you bring up a context menu, if you set this option, you're going to have this ability to make it will automatically display the radio buttons or the checkboxes. But for an options menu, you're still going to be able to set checkable and use all this functionality, but it's going to be up to you to change the icon or to provide some kind of display to let the user know that something's checked or selected. So that is a useful feature. You'll see it. A good example of this would be in the Google Maps application on your Android phone. You, you can see if you look at the layers there where it has the different views for like street view and do you want to show sh satellite or restaurants and those type of things. They've used the checkable items in that case.